Hey everyone, welcome to my new video. Recently, I've done a little Q&A session on the Instagram for you to ask me some questions, um, some things you might want to learn about, um, about me, about Blender, about all the stuff I do. There were a lot of them, so I went through it and picked some of those to answer. And maybe I will do one more uh, video like this or something like that to answer more of them. And I've noticed and there were a lot of questions regarding um, starting with Blender, um, where I go for inspiration or freelancing and stuff like that. So I've recently made a few videos where I addressed those topics. You can find a link in the description. Regarding the freelancing, I still think the most important thing for you, if you're at the square one, the most important thing is to just put your work out there, share it um, on social media channels, be consistent about your content, you know, getting the work done. So I think that's the most important thing still. And there are a lot of nuances around that. Uh, maybe I will address them later. Um, but this is, in my opinion, the most important one. So if you haven't started yet, you know, you have to get out there and get the work done. And when it comes to inspiration, I've already talked about uh, my Patreon a little bit, so I will remind you a little bit. Um, I post article every week about the current scene I'm working on. Um, I share all the inspiration insights, um, reference I use, the sketching process and all that stuff. Um, so you can check it out on my Patreon site or if you go to polygonrunway.com, you can subscribe to my newsletter on homepage and get this information in your email inbox so that's another thing i wanted to address and when it comes to starting with blender or 3d um i would most definitely recommend um trying my course you can go and try it on free.polygonrunway.com um, the link is in the description too so that's the free first episode of the course you can get your hands on it and you know check it out whether you like the style i'm teaching and then you can decide whether you go on and purchase the full course um, there is actually some new content coming um, by the end of the year so i'm working on the new stuff um, i will announce some of it soon so please stay tuned for some more information um, but the content will be bigger in the future so yeah if you want to begin with 3d um, my stuff out there is really beginner friendly so by all means, um, give it a try. And now we can proceed and address some of these um, very interesting questions. Mm, really soon, I guess. Um, I haven't done it yet because I'm still working on some stuff. I'm recording some footage and before I'm done editing, I want to have an option to go back to 2.83 and re-record some of that stuff. Um, so, yeah, that's the reason basically I'm kind of lazy, I guess. So I will update to 2.9 very soon. There aren't like many breaking changes for me that I couldn't wait to lay my hands on, though there are some interesting things like snapping on the vertex slide, you know, um, that new extrude tool, um, easier denoising and stuff like that. So um, by all means, 2.9 looks very promising. I'm looking forward to that. To be honest, I use very basic set of add-ons, uh, most of the stuff that has Blender already built in. The reason is I want to keep my Blender workflow as vanilla as possible. So when I record my process weekly and I do courses and tutorials and stuff like that, it's much easier for you to follow, it's much easier for you to set up the Blender I have it set up. But from the little that I use, I have to mention um, like Node Wrangler, uh, Bull Tool, Loop Tools, um, Extra Objects. Um, these are like essential in my opinion. So definitely go and activate those. Um, and there are some that help me sometimes like the sapling generator and some curve tools, simplified curve. Really very basic stuff. Um, I guess it's not more than 10 add-ons that I have activated inside Blender and I haven't installed any third-party add-ons apart from the ISOCAM. Um, um, why not? Um, I really thought about this um, before I got this question. 
that it will be funny to make some looping animation or something like that as a commentary tutorial and then the reels came so i started to play play with those and the x-wing is basically an older video from a tiktok experiment so yeah why not maybe i will do the x-wing maybe something a little bit different but um I would like to try to come up with some um, looping animation commentary tutorial or something like that. I get this question a lot and the answer is yes and no. Um, basically the modeling techniques that I teach in my course are 100% applicable uh, when you want to do content for video games because you know it's just the modeling tools and techniques and the ways you can come up with uh, new shapes or something like that so by all means the modeling workflow yes um, but the course material itself doesn't get you to a point where you can just uh, click and export um, some model to your game you would need to study a little bit more about how to optimize your model you know how to triangulate simplify um, some of the meshes um, you know with the games it it's all about like as little vertices or faces as possible and about good uvs good texturing and stuff like that and really um, efficient use of resources and with illustration um, especially illustration that I do not animate um, I can afford um, to be a little bit a little more a little bit sloppy with the, with the effective use of resources and faces and vertices so I use a lot of like angons booleans um, a lot of stuff like that anything that can help me to get to uh, illustration result in fast and efficient way so that's why um, I think the modeling techniques you learn are useful in you know every industry out there um, but then you would have to learn how to take those models and bring them into the 3d engine in efficient way before i started focusing heavily on 3d i was a designer since like 2005 or something and I did a lot of website designs, UI designs, um, I coded websites, so I'm fluent with HTML, CSS, JavaScript and stuff like that. I even um, coded some iOS apps, so I knew Objective-C, you know, Swift and stuff like that. So I was kind of a designer slash developer. I worked with marketing and advertising agencies and then in-house um, on some marketing campaigns in the company I've worked for so a lot of things basically and I was always this kind of jack of all trades I enjoy doing a lot of stuff um, and I really enjoy the fact that I can like get excited for something new and dive deep into a new knowledge and learn something new I think this is fairly simple the moment you get your first inquiry um, you are ready. Um, there is no need to like overthink stuff and try to evaluate your skills. Um, your client um, needs to evaluate your skills and the work you are delivering to him. So as long as you feel confident that for some particular project you can keep your client satisfied, um, you're ready, you can do the work, whatever the level of skill you're at at the moment. Yeah, so I get a lot of those too. Um, right now I'm running um, Ryzen, Ryzen, whatever. Ryzen 3950X, so that's the 16, so that's the 16 core 32 thread um, AMD processor. And I went for AMD mostly for my multitasking requirements. Um, a lot of times I'm like encoding, rendering video in the background and I need to work in the browser while doing that or write something. Um, so this CPU offers me the best performance um, for this kind of work. And yeah, they're really, really amazing. Um, these new MD CPUs, you can run Netflix in one monitor and render video on the other and it doesn't even blink. 
so great job there Andy and I went for a 64 gigs of RAM um, you know the more the better and M2 NVMe hard drives so these are SSDs again I need fast read times when I'm working with the video and when it comes to Blender um, Basically, Blender runs pretty swiftly on anything um, until you get to a point where you do some uh, simulation or something like that, something um, CPU heavy. Um, so that's where the reason really helps. And then when it comes to rendering, um, of course, you need some GPU brute force. If you want quick render, I run RTX 2080. Um, I got excited when I heard about the 3.0 series um, that came up recently, but I'm not sure I'm gonna upgrade just yet. I don't do um, that many render time heavy stuff. Um, most of the time these illustrations take like minute or two to render, so it really doesn't matter to me if I render in a minute or half a minute. Um, of course, that's something else if you're rendering out the animation then if you render three hours or one hour that's quite a difference so um, not ready to upgrade just yet um, we'll see but yeah that's the setup i'm running right now so um this is fairly individual um but i would say i model every day um they're really not i actually i don't think they're any days that I don't run Blender at all so and really it varies uh, depends on what I'm working on if I'm preparing a new shot for Monday or or something like that it can be like up to four or five hours per day if I'm working for a client assignment that might be even more so yeah a lot of hours of course there are some lighting schemes that can help you light your isometric scenes a little bit better but i wouldn't think of it that way because um you risk that you will run into a habit of setting up the lights in the same way every time um, of course you can set up like a backlight and some key light from the side and the fill light from the other side and just run with that every time but i would recommend um doing this individually per project where you just add one light um, find some angle you like you know look for the reflections um, shadows stuff like that what it does to your colors and the scene um, how it helps you to tell the story then add another light you know um, really think it through and try to do your lighting from scratch every time you have a new project it can be tempting to like use templates for lighting and that can be really helpful um, you know if you have some presets you can cycle through and really kind of ideate uh, the lighting settings but then if you land on something if you land on a preset or template you like I would recommend using it just as a blueprint for setting up your light and not reuse like lighting settings from project to project Um, from tutorials and YouTube videos and Blender Guru, <laughs> like everyone else, I remember um, I needed some model done for Unity when I was working on some like a game concept or something for iOS, um, and I needed a little character or something, so I went, and at the time the the Envato tutorial sites was very popular so most of the time these were uh, text tutorials and I ran like a blender 2.6 something or 5 even so very basic version of blender um, and I was able to do the job I needed to do and then later when we did some marketing campaign at my company I wanted to make like a locally flat shaded illustrations for that so I again went back to Blender you know and wrestled with it a little bit um, watched few YouTube videos and stuff like that and got more and more into it and you know since then I always like went to Blender when I needed something done in 3D 
because it was uh, most accessible for me since it's free. Um, it was easy to download, run on anything and I didn't need 3D every day. So it was basically best option for me as a designer. And you know, then I started to work more and more. And once you start making your own projects, you get to a point where you just Google up something um, when you need it. If you have uh, some basic set of knowledge that you can use, then it's only about like acquiring more and more um, from project to project. And that's the way I like to learn the most. Okay, so these were the few questions you asked me. Um, if you want to know something more or you would additionally like to ask something, go ahead and write it down in the comment section. If you like this video and you want to see more stuff like this in the future, hit that like. Um, if you're new to the channel and you like what you see, hit that subscribe button and the bell button so you get notified when I release something new. Um, thank you all for watching and see you on the next video.